Would the trick weapons in Bloodborne work as actual weapons in real life? Starting with the Blade of Mercy, this is probably the one that I find the most interesting because historically, having two blades kind of squished together that you could pull apart did happen. You can see them with some Chinese Dao, kind of like how Zuko used in Avatar The Last Airbender, and you can see them with rapiers. One flaw that they do have, if you could call it a flaw, is when they're merged together, they can't really cut well because there are just two competing blades and it doesn't really facilitate well to cutting material. However, with the Blade of Mercy, it's kind of offset like this. So that way you have a solid blade right here, so it could cut a lot better in its single blade form. So you could use it in one form or another pretty effectively, which I think is kind of the metric that you should judge these trick weapons by, if they're usable in both forms. Next up is the amygdalan arm. And quick funny story, my wife works in mental health and we were dating when I was playing this game and I was calling it the amygdala because, you know, that's what it's called in the game. And she was thinking I was talking about the amygdala, which is a part of the human brain. But now I just call that part of the human brain the amygdala because that annoys her. Anyway, the arm in its retracted form, I mean, it's a heavy thing that you can bonk things with. Bonk the like button. Not an ideal weapon, but, I mean, you, you could use it. However, extended, it's kind of like a flexible scythe thing, which would be pretty impractical because it'd be difficult to get edge alignment on, and it would also be quite large. The Beast Claw is pretty much like one of those Death Claw gauntlets from Fallout. And yeah, these weapons could definitely work. They're kind of, sort of similar to the Indian Katar. However, something that you have to consider with these weapons and the Katar is the blades, or in this case the claws, those are usually probably sturdier than these bones. So if you were doing any rotational or leverage-based techniques, then your arm bones would probably give way before the actual weapon itself. Just something to keep in mind, you can't do everything with these types of weapons. With the Beast Hunter Scythe and the Saw Cleaver and all the other weapons really like that, it's important to note that the hinge there would be a massive weak point. And the weight would really be off for being an effective weapon, since, you know, normally you're holding a sword and the weight's up here, but with these types of weapons, you'd be holding the sword and then the weight's out here. It would just be weird and pretty fragile. The threaded cane, in its more normal form, it would definitely be a functional weapon, because, you know, it's a cane and it has a pointy end. You can bonk things and you can stab things. That's pretty efficient. However, when it's extended, that's when things are a bit difficult. Blades cut because their edges are aligned with things. They're able to actually bite into things and slide through the material. With all of these different bladed spikes, they would be a little bit askew, so they wouldn't really cut into things. Now, while these wouldn't really cut, they could still puncture, and even though they'd pretty much be flopping all over the place, you know, getting unaligned, they could still bite into something, but it wouldn't be nearly as effective as you would think. Now, a lot of people have mentioned maybe making it something like a bike chain, which is more in line. However, even those have some flex. And the Beast Cutter is pretty much the same idea, except beefier and more strength-based, and would be worse. The Blood Letter starts off as a standard mace, and it even has kind of a cross guard, so it'd be pretty effective. It looks like it'd be on the heavier side, however, probably still usable. Now in its extended form, it's got a massive spiky morning star head on it, and if it were made of steel, then that would be ridiculously heavy and impossible to use. However, this is made of blood, which does have some iron in it, but not much. And I mean, if it was solidified, then it might be an effective weapon. I mean, if we had some magic to make that a solid material, it would work. But in the real world, it wouldn't. Normally, I'd say that the boom hammer is too big, but it's obviously relatively hollow since, you know, it has that furnace inside. It's neat. It's, it needs to have space in there. And I think you could definitely make something that works kind of as a lighter, where you could ignite something in there. However, then swinging it around would pretty much make that all come out. 
and the hot end isn't on the strike face of the hammer, so it won't really do too much damage when you're hitting it with the hammer, because the fire will just be out the other side. So this one kind of comes down to, you could make it work, but should you? The blade on the burial blade would definitely work. However, the attachment point that it has, and also the hinges on the shaft, would be some pretty major weak points. So you could make it, however, it wouldn't be that effective. The Chikage is pretty much a katana with a slightly unorthodox, more crossguard style hilt. And while we don't have a way to make blood solidify on it and extend the blade, at least that I know of in reality, if there was some magic that did that and the blood was solidified, I mean, again, since blood has iron in it, it could theoretically be a good medium to do this. So it's a pretty neat idea. In its shortened form, the church pick could be a functional weapon. It would probably have to be relatively hollow, although you might want to make it that size because it's more surface area. And in the shortened form, it could work. You'd probably need to use two hands to use it, but it could work. And in its extended form, it would also probably work as a pick, again, if it were hollow. The big issue would be transitioning from one to the other. The theme here seems to be that these transitions would introduce a lot of weak points, so it'd be very difficult to make. The Holy Moonlight Sword, the sword itself, definitely 100% functional. However, we don't have the magic to make it bigger. And if we made a steel sword in this size, then it wouldn't really be functional because it would be way too heavy for normal mortals to use. The Hunter's Axe by itself is too large, however, I have a video on making it with a collapsible baton in order to, you know, make that extending thing kinda sorta functional. It wouldn't work 100% like it does in the game, but it could work feasibly. The Kirk Hammer is a really cool weapon. I mean, the hammerhead is way too big. However, you could definitely make a sword with a hilt that kind of locks on there more securely and with a smaller warhammer head on there. Or just have it be a heavier scabbard, maybe with some studs on it and use it like a Tatsubo. Which really reminds me of the old Beowulf movie with Christopher Lambert, because he had something like that. Nobody's seen that movie, though. Ko's Parasite is, uh a little not existing. However, I mean, you could have like a whip or a rope dart or something that you have attached to your arm and you could throw it out like that. Not the same thing, but I mean, unless you want to put like an octopus on your arm and train it to attack, that might work. The Logarius wheel, I mean, probably too heavy for most people, but if you could lift it and move it around, I mean, you could bonk people with it. Ludwig's Holy Blade is pretty much the same as a Kirk Hammer. I mean, you could theoretically have a sword that works and a scabbard that goes over it and locks on, and the scabbard has larger blades on itself. I mean, you could definitely do that. You don't really get too much from it, though. The Rakuyo isn't really the best design because it's a rapier which you hold extended out and then that would have the secondary blade essentially pointing right at you most of the time that you're using it. However, there was at least one weapon historically that was a rapier with a blade coming out of the end. It was pretty much a rich person thing who wanted like a... I don't even know. But it existed. But not the best. The Rider Plosh is a sword with a gun on it, which did exist. And these sorts of combination weapons weren't too popular, with one notable exception. They were more rich people things because they weren't as good as having a sword, weren't as good as having a gun, and normally if you wanted both, you would just have a sword and a gun. But it works! And the Rifle Spear also works. They had spears that you just have guns mounted on. However, in Bloodborne, there's a lot of intricate movement to set it up, and that just introduces more weak points. I mean, you'd be better off with a historical rifle spear type thing. With Simon's bow blade, the blade itself is relatively unorthodox, but it would be functional. 
It's kind of like a weird, extended, yet again, Chattel type thing. With maybe a bit of flamberge, I don't know. It's a bit weird, but it could work. Now, transforming into a bow wouldn't really work. It would just be a lot of parts that would have to move out of the way in a really precise fashion that it'd be pretty impossible to do. Now you could theoretically make a sort of bow blade. If you had two swords and you put them together, and instead of like how this one is with the blade kind of in line with where you're shooting at, you could have the blades turned so that way they're able to flex because a lot of swords have flex in them. So the blade, then you could put a string on there and you could use it like a bow, theoretically. That would pretty much just be ruining a sword though, and it wouldn't really be worth it to just not carry a bow and a sword instead of that. A lot of the moveset with the stake driver looks like something that you could replicate with something like a guitar or a pata, which again is like a punching dagger type thing or a punching sword. Although it's not really a punching sword, it's more swinging. But having all the extra bulk doesn't really make sense because you do get the benefit of having it drive forward. However, your arm is going there too, and as it drives forward, it would also push your arm back. So it might not function as well as it indicates in the games, and it would probably not be worth the modification. Although, with modern technology, you could definitely make something that works similar. Maybe use compressed air. The tinnitus is a big heavy thing that you could bonk things with, so it works on that front. And it'd be hollow, so it would be slightly lighter. With modern technology, you could set it up with, like, taser-type things. I mean, they make taser batons and that sort of thing. You could probably make similar with this. So it would actually be quite functional, exactly how it is in the game. Next up, the Whirly Gig Saw. I mean, on first... Next up is... Next up is the Whirly Gig Saw, and at first look, it does look, you know kind of ridiculous. However, they do make chainsaws on sticks, and I'm sure that you could make your own thing that has a large circular saw with that. And while having something exactly like this one function, you could have something that functions similarly. If you wanted to. Now on to firearms. The cannon and the church cannon would be functional weapons, but not really something that you could carry in your offhand. The Evelyn pistol is a long-barreled pistol, and yeah, it would work if it were made with all the, you know, black powder trimmings. The Fist of Gratia is pretty much brass knuckles except a large chunk of iron. I mean, that thing would be heavy, but if you could hold it and use it, yeah, brass knuckles. Iron knuckles. The flame sprayer is like a primitive flamethrower. I mean, they had bellows and they had pumps and those sorts of things in the Victorian era. So you could theoretically make it. It would probably be pretty dangerous to use, though. Even more so than a regular flamethrower. The Gatling gun, I mean, Gatling guns existed. You could make it. However, it wouldn't really be the best to use handheld, both because of weight and also because they were traditionally fed from the top using a gravity magazine. So if you're holding that in your arm, you'd have to hold it pretty straight. And if you just tilt it to the side slightly, then it won't feed properly. And if you're moving around a lot, it would probably jam a lot. So mechanically, it wouldn't be the best. The blunderbuss was a type of weapon. It was usually a two-handed firearm, but I mean, you could make a smaller one. The Hunter's Pistol is a black powder pistol, so yeah, it would work. The Hunter's Torch is a torch! It torches things. You can bonk things with it and make fire and light. The Lock Shield is a seemingly functional shield. It's made of glass, so though probably would break quickly. The Piercing Rifle is pretty much a rifle with a massive bayonet, and you could use this kind of like a one-handed spear rifle type thing, so yeah, it'd be pretty functional. Ludwig's Rifle would be just fine to use two-handed, but one-handed, it'd be pretty bulky and difficult to aim. The Repeating Pistol probably could be functional. It, it would probably work. And the wooden shield would definitely work in real life, because, you know, shields worked. But I like the little jab that they have at Dark Souls, that the shields, 
against massive foes with a lot of strength won't be really effective. And they're right, they won't be.